Hey, and I am back with another April Fool You, and today is also Take Out Your Tools Tuesday, so I have all of the tools that we were going to play with today. Well, actually, we're not going to play with all of these. I just wanted to show you guys a few variations and different things, um, you know, what to look for, I guess, is, is kind of where I wanted to go with, um, with all of this. Uh, the tool that we will be playing with are stamps and coordinating dies, okay? I know that that's not like a whole thing to have a lecture on, but I think it's very informative, especially if you're just starting out, to know what to look for when you're purchasing stamps and dies, okay? So I've got those. Then I also have um, my inspiration, because I kind of veered off from it last week, um, but I do have my inspiration, and I'm going with this umbrella. I'll, I'm going to try to do rainbows, you guys. Whew, wish me luck, but I'm going to try. As well as, I'm going to play with this sketch and see how I can pull some, um, oh, what's it called? Some embellishments from this sketch. I want to be inspired by this sketch to create some embellishments. So I have that. Then I have my seven things. So my mini paper pads, I've got my Vicki Booten foundation, which um, in all honesty, I planned on stamping, die cutting, and then watercoloring. Okay, that's what I planned on doing. Now, if it looks like a hot mess, it's because I have my like sample board underneath what she already created right here. So that's why it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> Just to let you know. I also have my, um, my happy, happiness, paper pad which is almost gone but if you notice everything that's left in it is kind of rainbow-ish okay I also have um, oops that fell out I also have this cutout where we cut out all of those butterflies right there and I thought that it would be kind of cool to use this as something I don't know yet um, if not it just will be used in my trash can I also have um, these oops uh, this pack still. I didn't use all of them for um, doilies, but I've got the glitter ones left and the kind of like pearl ones left. And I was thinking of, yes, using them for doilies again. So I'll pull out my die and start, um, start die cutting all different ones. I'm not sure about the sizes just yet, but I have that. So that pulls out uh, mini paper pads and my doilies as well. Um, Here's the pocket cards that I picked out. Now these ones are all square pocket cards, but they kind of sort of match the um, the colors that I'm going for in my other one. And I just pulled out every single one of them. I don't remember the name of this collection or where I even got it. Um, I just don't remember any of it. It could be a close to my heart collection from way back in the day. I, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, but this is all I have left from all of those little... Um, from the cards. So I thought, let's use them up. And then mixed media again, I'm going to pull out, it's not even open. <laughs> but I got some new sprays, you guys. I'm so super excited. I got some Distress Mica Sprays um, from Ranger, they're Tim Holtz Mica Sprays. And this one's Tarnished Brass. Sorry, it's hard to, with all of these words, especially in a row, it's hard to read where, um, where the name is. And it's Tarnished Brass, so it looks like that. And it's not really a gold, and then the other one is more of a copper, and I didn't want the copper. I wanted more of the um, the dull gold, uh, which they call brass. So, of course, um, with mica sprays, you don't want to um, leave them upright, because apparently they, the bottom of the, um, the spritzer will get clogged with the mica. So you want to leave them on their side, and then the mica settles down on the side right here, and then it'll be easier when you set them up to spray and you want to twist them like this as opposed to shaking them okay now I have to remember that to do that every time because of the fact that I just I shake that's all I do okay so mica spray is my um, <clears throat> my mixed media I'm not going to do shaker blisters uh, not this time I do have this is our last week you guys <gasps> is it no way. So this is our last week. Um, I do have one more set of shaker blisters, and then I will be blister-less. 
<laughs> I'm super excited. So I will be playing with uh, shaker blisters, just not today or tomorrow. Um, and this Take Out Your Tools Tuesday might show up on Wednesday because I have been um, uber super busy, you guys. I am so sorry. But I did want to do this um, this one here because it's very, very... Uh, I think it's common now. I think this is the norm for our stamps now, is they stamps and dies. So allowable tools, uh, or allowables are tools and stamps. Well, we're going to be using the stamps. And then I have my dice, which I have not rolled yet. Okay, so I need to know what I'm going to be adding. Right now I just have all the flat things. That's all I have. I have flat things. Even these are flat, unless I use dimensionals. Um, so I've got a bulky die and a use it up die. I'm going to roll my die. And I got two fives. Oh, that's awful. I've already used flare. <laughs> and I've already used ribbon. Oh my gosh. Last week, you guys, and I didn't touch at all my enamel dots, my metal pieces. Um, I've been playing with sequins, uh, so that one was kind of a given. I didn't get to play with cut files, uh, die cut embellishments, or clips. So um, flare and ribbon is what we will be doing on these. So let me go get my flare. My, just my little bin of flair, but there, it's still too big for me, right? Okay, and then I will grab the ribbon as I go because I'm not sure basically what I will be doing is, um, you know, kind of sort of matching the colors with whatever's dominant in, um, in the embellishment. Does that make sense? So I can't just go get all of my colors because they're in a color bin and that would leave eight bins on my desk. No way. <laughs> I can't do that, you guys. So I will go and grab um, some ribbon here in a few off camera. You guys don't need to watch me leave every five seconds. And then I also pulled out this. Now this is new to me. I just got this at my Joann's. Um, and my so let's get started talking and, and just gabbing about, the, um, about these dies right here, okay? About your stamps and dies and what is it that I wanted to talk about. So these were the ones that I picked out for today. Um, these two here are by Alta New and Pink Fresh. It was a collab that they did together. So I'm assuming that Alta New created the design and then Pink, Pink Fresh um, actually... It's, so it's actually this... Ugh, it fell apart like bad. This paper pad right here, um, they created this collection called Celebrate. And I've got the 12 by 12s as well as the 6 by 6s But they've also got stamp sets that match and a, um, a little die cut pack. So I've got um, my large image along with a whole bunch of words. Um, some of them could be used for cards, which I feel like most of them are. And then the die that comes with it um, isn't little labels to help you cut out all these words. No, of course not. It's just this that will frame in your large image and help you cut this out. Now, um, because this is a solid-ish stamp, I could have taken this to my um, my scan and cut and cut this out. I would have preferred to have lots of little labels to cut out all these words. That's what I would have preferred, but hey, some companies don't think like that. It's okay. Um, instead, we get this and um, this was only sold as is. You couldn't buy the stamp set by itself at the time. I don't know if you can now, um, but at the time you you bought it as a, as a bundle. So when they're on sale as a bundle, um, I don't mind I don't mind doing that. But normally I would not have bought the the die for this. And same with this one. Um, I have a. It's actually more of like a three step stamp here. So you've got your outline. And then you've got your shading, more shading, and then these are for the leaves. Okay. Yes. These are shading for the leaves, and then this is the center of the flower. And then I have this tiny little word right here that'll probably get lost. It says, for you. The die, on the other hand, um, is this that cuts out the entire flower, which is mostly the stamp set. Okay. Again, another solid image. Um, my scan and cut could have done that. And then I have this word that comes with. So it's a little bonus and it says thankful. Okay. And this is um, the word. And this is the outline for the word to try and give it like that border. Okay. So that is what this is. Now, this one, because it comes with an extra die, is it worth getting this? Um, again, it came with 
the set so it was a stamp and die set together so I I bought it right but I probably would have just bought this and not this because this is more for cards thankful is I can put it on a layout or two and I'm thankful for you know all my layouts um, but I but it's a lot of effort for me I guess I would say anyways I'm, I'm not trying to talk mean or bad I promise um, and then on the back it also shows you how to line up your stamps in order to get the image that you're looking for um, to match like so Okay, and you just take the stamp and you line up all of the images. These are just suggested colors. You don't necessarily have to um, use those exact colors. They just recommend them because of the fact that that's what their collection was created from. And then more to talk about. I have these alphas from the stamp market. They are so awesome, you guys. And honestly, I don't remember where I purchased these. Um, I think I went straight to the stamp market to buy them. I really did. So you get this entire alpha sheet right here. Okay. And what I've been doing is I've been stamping and embossing. That's what I've been doing because I thought it would look really cool raised up. And then you take this entire die and you cover it over your letters like so. Ta-da! And then you cut it out. They're sold separately. I haven't seen them sold as a set um, yet. They are sold separately, which I think is kind of a little, nah, you can't use one without the other. But I guess you could if you were very meticulous about your trimmer going up and through all these and up and through all of those. Um, yeah, it's definitely you need one, with, one for the other to make your life um, easier. So there is that. Now, let me tell you guys, um, I keep talking about my scan and cut and I keep talking about how great it is. I keep talking about, you know, um, don't purchase this, just purchase that for the stand, for the scan and cut. Uh, but for those that don't have the scan and cut, you can always fussy cut these out. Um, a pair of scissors are way cheaper than the die themselves, right? Now I'm only talking about something like this, okay? This to me, um, you know, and it, like I said, it depends on if you get them for sale. It depends on if you get them for, you know, a, a bundle. It, it just depends on how you got this, okay? For me, it was a bundle. I bought the whole, uh, what is it, Celebrate? Yeah, I bought the whole Celebrate collection, so I was stuck with the dies, okay? Am I complaining that I have the dies? No, because it'll go by easier. Um, but I do want to know, yeah, it's too big. Okay. Um, but I, you know, but you can, uh, I do want to know. What do I want to know? I don't know. I lost my train of thought in 15 seconds or less. I apologize. Um, so if I didn't buy the bundle and I was picking and choosing what I wanted out of this collection, um, I definitely would have made smarter choices, but the collection was on sale because it was brand new and it was a collab that's never been done before. So in order to get people to purchase it and start bragging about it they they offer it at a ridiculous um, discount and then once like a hundred of those is sold then they start breaking it up or um, raising the price and things like that so it's it's weird how companies work like that but I have seen that done just especially when it's a new product and all to new um, some people haven't heard of them yet uh, some of them know pink fresh very very well and so when they say all to new it's like what's that you know colors are very gorgeous all that stuff so um, but this isn't about all to new this is about the stamps and the dies and like I said um, I probably would have purchased this stamp set by itself instead of this die because I think this die um, in my opinion and by itself which I don't know if it's even available by itself you guys so I could be talking out my bum um, but by itself I think it's not worth anything because it doesn't come with anything else other than to cut out this flower for you guys. Um, I don't mind fussy cutting. I don't mind, um, you know, stamping it on a page and using it on a background. There's so many more things I could do with this that saves me the money for this. Seriously. I, I just don't think this is worth it. Now, um, I have stopped buying dies like this. I really have. Unless they come in 
a, a bundle. You can't get this stamp without this die. Um, so that's the only way that uh, I ended up with with dies like this. But I personally, it irritates me. I, I'm sorry to say that it it does. It bothers me because throw in a few labels, uh, you know, like a large one and a long one, and you know, and even a medium one because that would go with all of these. And that would have made the, made it worth the price because now I have to figure out how to cut out all of these uh, sayings. You know, if I were to use them, I'm not saying I am, but seriously, that is uh, that's what I I would have to do is figure out how to cut out all those all those sayings, and they're all different sizes and whatnot. Um, but just for this die, I I would not I would not have bought that die. Now, um, let me see what else I wanted to show you guys because there's all sorts of different stamps and dies out there. Now this is another one, and I apologize Vicki Booten, I really, really do. Um, this is another one that I would not have purchased the dies because again, you've got lots of solid image stamps. Throw this in my scan and cut or fussy cut, especially these flowers. That's the easiest fussy cut I have ever seen in my life. I would have just bought this, but they're not sold separate. They're sold together, so now I have these dies. But when I see open dies like this and nothing else, no no little squiggly die to go around these specific images or for this one right here, a fancy little label die, none of that stuff, it turns me away. It really, really does. Um, but again, I got this in a bundle and so that's how I ended up with that one. And let me see, what else is there? Um, close to my heart's another one. Close to my heart sells these these awesome stamps right okay but their dies I would not have bought this but again it was a die cut uh, no it was a it was a kit and these came in the kit all right but all of these I, I mean just cut them out they're easy super easy this is a punch right here all of those but the images that I would have wanted like the tree is there yes I would use the tree but the fly, I would have loved the fly and cute little heart border. Oh my gosh, that would have been amazing, right? But no, it's just the simple things that they make the dies for. And I just don't, that doesn't, that does nothing for me, okay? It really, really does nothing for me. So what is in my entire basket then if I don't like these types of dies, right? What is in here? Let me show you. Most of them are Stampin' Up! And Stampin' Up, I think, has gotten on the bandwagon of what will get people to buy this, buy the dies to go with the stamps. Now, this is a stamp set that I absolutely love, okay? Now, not so much for the sayings because I'm not a card person, you guys. Seriously, I don't make cards. Um, I do at my girlfriend's house because that's what she likes, and that's the class that she teaches. And so I will go over there, and I'll make her little cards. But then nine times out of ten, I end up taking those embellishments that we put on the cards and ripping them off and bringing them home to use on my scrapbooks. Don't tell her I said that, but that is true. But see, this gorgeous... That is beautiful. I love this. I love this. I love all of these images, right? But the die set that comes with it... Look at that. That's awesome, you guys. Okay? It is completely awesome. So here's your stamp set. And here's your die set. Please don't tell me that that's not worth it. So not only do I get a stamped feather right here. Okay? Can't see it. Sorry. This is the stamped feather. This is the image for the stamped feather. But I also get an embossed die cut feather. Okay? Here's my uh, butterfly. Here's my butterfly, but I also get a cutout butterfly. Super cool. Same with the flower and same with this gorgeous leaf thing that would have been a pill to cut out, trust me. But I also get all these extra little bits that are just standalone dies. Um, this one here is like a smaller of that flower inside, or I could put it inside and get just that flower and have a smaller flower, okay? This is amazing to me. I've got this awesome border. I've got two, nope, I lied. This one in the middle doesn't go. <laughs> I apologize. Um, this is actually from their rectangle set and I left it in there for a project. So you get this, um, this frame right here and this border as well. What for? Who knows? Honestly, who knows? Because you could put the saying way down here in the corner, this one in the center. Uh, I'm, I don't know. But this is worth purchasing to me, okay? Because of all the little extras 
that I have gotten. Now, over the years, I have been very picky because if it's only got one or two images and all the rest are card sayings, I will buy just the dies because I'm okay with having this die, like this feather right here. I have an open die for the one image that was on there, but then I have an entire card sheet of dies. Let me show you one for an example. I know we're not talking about dies. I have a great example right here, I apologize. So this one here is their snow globe, right? And I didn't buy the actual stamps for this snow globe. I bought the dies all by themselves because I could cut out the base of the snow globe and then put an intricate part of a base on a snow globe. I have cute little polar bears, this awesome little deer, a cute little church. These trees I could cut out even though it was made for a stamp. I could cut this out and still brush stroke some trees inside there. This is for the snow globe itself and then it's also for a blister. But once all the blisters are gone, which I only have one left, you guys. <laughs> once all the blisters are gone, it's still an awesome snow globe that fits on top of the base. This right here is a little house. And then this right here was the stamped image. It's the only thing that looks awkward on my entire sheet. Everything else, I can use this as a standalone. I don't need that stamp set for this image of a house and trees and all that stuff. I didn't need it but I'm okay with the rest of this stuff. It's all very usable and I didn't need the stamp set to go with it because it was seriously this, the trees, and words. All sorts of words. And I'm good with that. I, 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 I'd rather have this. Honestly, that is, that is what I started looking for is, um, you know, is it worth it? When I get these and this is all they have, is it worth it? And then I start looking at my image a lot. I really start looking at the detail of the image and considering if my scanning cut can cut it, I don't buy this. That, that's basically all it is to it. Now, another thing that I also like about having these dies, so I'm not saying don't, you know, stop buying the dies to match, um, especially if you can't fussy cut. Um, don't go out and buy a scanning cut because it's big, bulky, and uh, quite the learning curve. So I'm not saying go and buy all of these things so you can use your stamps. Not one bit. No, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm, I do that to save me money because I did invest in a scan and cut. That's why I did it. Okay. It, it's total reverse psychology. I already purchased a big item. So now I'm trying to pay myself back by not buying these. That's what that, that's the psychology there. But um, also the scan and cut can't travel, right? So if I were to take just this, I would have to fussy cut it at a retreat or a crop or um, you know, in, in a hotel. Uh, I, I vacation all the time and I travel or I scrapbook you know, all the time on my vacation in the car, things like that. And so if I had the die, then I could get it done that much faster. If not, I'm spending my time trying to fussy cut this out. So think about that um, really quickly. I also have, um, you know, like if I know this is what I'm going to use, I will stamp it in black and die cut it before I leave on my retreat, vacation, whichever. Um, because nine times out of ten, the retreat will have a die cut machine. But if you're just going on a trip with your family and you're a scrapbooker, you know, and you want to, like me, I get up before everyone else and so I have about two hours to play before the rest of the world wakes up. And so... Um, I, I die cut and I stamp and I scrapbook while my family's sleeping, okay? Um, so anyways, I just wanted to, to go over that, go over, you know, what to look for when you purchase a stamp set or when you purchase, um, you know, a die for your stamp set. Uh, don't think that you need it, especially if you love fussy cutting, just get the stamp. It, it's so much easier, so much simpler, but if fussy cutting is not your thing and you don't want to invest in the die in the scan and cut, which I get because it is a huge learning curve, huge, you guys. Um, I'm not going to lie that it's, it takes a little bit of finessing to get it to work. Um, but once you figured it out, it's like, wow, where has this been all my life? Okay. Um, but if this is your jam and these, and these dies are your jam, then buy them. I'm not saying don't buy them. I'm not saying stop buying them. I'm just saying that it is something that I have stopped investing in 
because I have the means and capability of not needing them. Okay. okay? I'm going to stop talking because I feel like I don't, I'm not making any sense. I'm having a hot flash right at the moment. It's awful. And I will um, come back to, I'm going to stamp a whole bunch of stuff for you guys. I'm going to die cut them for you and then uh, move on to what the actual project's going to be. All right, let's get going. With loads of technical difficulty, I finally got this video up and running, and I apologize for uh, the introduction seeming a little bit so skippy. I did feel like I was getting a little preachy on um, how I felt with, you know, um, stamps and dies. Honestly, it's it's my opinion, um, and it's the way that, uh, you know, I now shop for stamps and dies, basically. And I apologize if I offended anybody or you know, said it the wrong way um, and, and all that stuff. I really do apologize. I don't mean um, to sound, you know, negative at all um, about all of these um, wonderful tools that are out there for us now. So I am using a stamp positioner for um, doing the inner bits of these flowers. And the reason is, is because once you put an opaque um, ink on a clear stamp it for me it is very hard for me to see through and I'm unable to line them up as easy as um, some people out there can so I rely on the stamp positioners a lot more than the um, the stamp press that I was using to do the solid images so here is uh, what the image looks like up close and personal um, and you know using the stamp positioner and then this is what it looked like when I used the actual stamp press and you can see that I missed um, the lines I, I didn't line it up all the way and all that stuff plus I also used um, an embossing ink or no um, powder and when I couldn't press hard enough, um, you know, to get past the powder. So I still like how it looks. Um, and I especially like when you rub your finger over it and the ink kind of smears and gives it that hazy look. Anyways, um, I went ahead and I showed you guys my travel die cut machine. Um, that's the machine that I take anywhere and everywhere. It's even been camping with me, you guys. Um, only because I do enjoy doing this and I do wake up way before everyone else. Even when we are camping, um, I, I absolutely love First Light of Dawn. It is my favorite view in the whole wide world. Um, and I, I just enjoy sitting there and having a blast, um, you know, playing with my craft. Uh, here I am actually watercoloring all of the embossed images. And so if it looks like magic, it's not. I'm just pouring the color within the um, embossed little well that has been created and the ink kind of sort of stays put and pools up um, until it starts to dry. And I absolutely love doing this because of the fact that um, I can mix the water and play with it to get it to go where I want and be saturated in more spots. So as it was drying, I was just kind of pushing the ink back into, um, you know, where I wanted the highlights and the darker spots and the shading and all that stuff. And so I was just using ink on top of ink in order to get the shading that I was desired. So um, I also did not record um, painting everything else. And it, to be honest, this recording was six and a half hours long. <laughs> I recorded uh, every little step of the way. So this is me doing a rainbow effect on my embossed lettering that I had did so or done or do. Anyways, <laughs> words elude me. Um, but uh, I did actually emboss all of the lettering um, for each one of these alphabet stamps. And so basically it was clear embossing and now I'm just going over with my uh, oxide ink and that is how I am able to blend it because it actually stays wet longer. And so I'm just taking a paper towel and smudging all of the ink colors. But because I didn't want brown by the time I got to my pale pink, I um, basically was trying to move my finger around the paper towel. And so that way I just had blue on this finger and green on this one and so on and so forth and then of course I splashed some more water I dried it with a heat gun because I'm impatient and now I am creating a sticker sheet so I didn't create the sticker sheet no 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 um, I'm actually taking the a sticky back that is made by Sizzix and I backed my entire sheet now it's a 6 by 12 and my sheet was only a 6 by 8 so that made it perfect now I have a 4 inch piece left over 
But if I run it through my die cut machine without my metal plate, now my metal plate is for intricate dies, but if I run it through without my metal plate, it doesn't go all the way through the sticker sheet, which is a blessing because now I have just created four cute little sticker alpha tiles. And so I can put them in with the rest of my alpha tiles and use them later. Um, I, I basically just have extras left over because I do end up only using one of those sticker sheets and not every letter, obviously. Ha. So I've already kind of sort of um, divided up my um, my pieces that I have, my, my bits and pieces that I plan on using. Um, you know, into each little section. I plan on doing 15, I believe. And then I um, basically turned the camera on because, you know, I forget. I, I turn it off and I turn it on and I turn it off. Actually, halfway through this project, I turned it off when I thought I wasn't recording. And I was. <laughs> Six and a half hours, you guys. It it was very long, um, but this project was very extensive. The watercoloring, the die cutting, the stamping, um, you know, the embossing, all of that took time um, just to prepare for what it was that I was starting to do. And now that I have all the elements to do what I want to do, you know, I zoom in the camera and now I'm ready to go. And by this point, um, you know, I got all the elements from my inspiration, which was the sketch. And I didn't put the sketch up because of the fact that by the time that I had all these pieces laid out to me, it's like, oh, I don't think that's going to work. Um, for one, my strips are too small. And for two, the embellishment would have been ginormous if I would have um, left it the way that I was originally going to to, um, you know, do it as following the sketch. So, and one of the things that I was kind of disappointed in, and if you guys didn't know, <laughs> um, was the fact that um, I didn't want ribbon. Again, I have such a hard time trying to throw a piece of ribbon at something. And honestly, uh, by the time I was done with this, that, um, that like ball and chain ribbon, I don't know what it's called, puffy ribbon. <laughs> I don't know. But by the time I was done, I decided I'm going to move that out of my craft room. I, I have no use for it. Um, it. It's great for birthday layouts, but I don't do a whole lot of birthday layouts. Um, it, we, you know, do birthdays in such small scale that we don't really make a big deal of it. Uh, nine times out of 10, we are celebrating it in, you know, a public restaurant. And so not a lot of, res you know, pictures are taken um, for birthdays, uh, I'd rather, you know, scrapbook other things, basically. Um, as mean as that sounds, I'm a horrible mom, I know. But uh, yeah, that is, um, you know, that birthdays aren't aren't very much in, you know, my scrapbooks. Um, and so anyways, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, the... <sighs> I just have no use for the ball and chain ribbon. I, I just don't. And that is where I'm going with. And so I decided that um, all of the rolls that I have, which I think is three, um, maybe only two, I'm not sure, uh, they're going to be out of my craft room after this film um, and into my de-stashing pile, which is getting larger, you guys. I am loving this. So when I um, was filming the introduction to this particular video and I had my entire basket full of stamps and dies. I went through all of them, you guys, and decided to move some out that I no longer, um, you know, like that appeal to me anymore. And so it's like, oh, I have one that looks kind of sort of like this. I don't need to, that sort of thing. Um, so anyways, I am just going to go through each and every little, um, you know, like cluster that I have put together. My strips aren't all the same except for the um, striped strips, the rainbow striped strips. They are the only things that I cut the exact same because of the fact that I cut them on the six inch side where all the others I cut on the, the eight inch side. And so I basically did a whole bunch of random strips from a quarter inch all the way up to I think three quarter. Um, I didn't want them to be too big. I was trying to keep these embellishments in the small scale. Now, here was an idea that I had. I thought about enhancing the leaf portion of my flower a little bit by taking some green and then another color because I do this um, at another time on another um, cluster. But this one happens to be blue. And I just, I just kind of uh, folded them in half and made loops and put them, you know, with the leaves in hopes to make them look like more leaves maybe or um, you know an add-on to a leaf. I don't know you guys. I'm making it up as I go and that's basically what it is. And then I decided I'm just going to start gluing. If I like it, bam, it's glued. 
that's that's how it is um like this one right here i absolutely loved right now and the butterfly and the doily but then i had to make everything else work um I, I felt like i had to make everything else work later on you'll see where if i liked it this way but i'm forcing myself to use a piece i throw the piece off to the side um i i just don't i don't force myself um to feel like i have to use you know eat all the pieces on every single one of these clusters. Um, I, I have been doing that ever since I started this series, but I do, um, I do feel like I don't, it's not needed. Now here, look, I try again. <laughs> this one, I tried to use them as enamel dots. Yep. And I, you know, I even was like, oh, I like that. No, I don't. Nope. It's done. <laughs> I don't like it. And then I tried a pink ribbon and I thought, no, I don't like this, you guys. Nope, no ribbon. It's not going to happen. I, I just, I'm all ribboned out, you guys. Um, I do start using the ribbon in um, another way. Oh, texting. How dare you? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so I do, um, I do end up using the ribbon in another way that I actually ended up liking to the point where I did it a few times. Um, so I did, I did like it. Uh, and I'm not sure, is this it? Is this where I do it? Maybe it is. Um, so here I decided that, you know, this ribbon here is the widest ribbon that I have um, to be able to cover and fill in my, um, my butterflies. And so basically what I did was, um, you know, because I didn't like the dark blue with this um, aqua blue or, or teal blue, whatever color that is, um, I didn't like it. And so instead I decided to make my own rainbow and I stuck it behind the butterflies and I absolutely loved it. But the only way that I can get with patience, um, the, the ribbon to stick was with glue dots. So I had to stick glue dots, um, around the butterfly little cutout, uh, in order to hold at least one part of the ribbon, at least until I could get it glued down. Um, so that was kind of a struggle. You guys don't really get to see it with as fast as the video is going, but, um, it was a struggle, but I did enjoy, you know, how it ended up looking. And I do do it a couple of times, uh, later, later when, um, I realized that I don't have to do it just once. <laughs> Rules can be broken. So here I am, um, taking my, glue dots and basically putting them everywhere that I can to put the ribbon behind it. And I just love how that looks, you guys. I am so glad that I took the plunge and tried to, you know, instead of trying to make the paper work, I made the ribbon work. So I did end up using the ribbon. Um, it just wasn't how I expected to use it. Uh, I, I would have never thought to do this if I, if I didn't roll a ribbon, if that makes sense. Um, I probably would have cut paper out um, instead of the paper strips, or I probably would have done something, something. I have no idea. Um, this one I really love. I love um, taking all those blue tones and trying to make them work. I covered up the pink on purpose and just tried to do a whole bunch of blues based off, uh, based off the flower that was in, um, you know, that, that I uh, stamped, I guess. Um, just for something different is basically what it was. I didn't want just all pink flowers or peach flowers. So here I'm doing the uh, loopy thing again. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, uh, but I, I put the two ribbons together and then I try to separate them so they're more than one loop. Um, I didn't want them to look like they were, uh, you know, like purposely folded as in one ginormous loop type thing. So yeah, that is that. And I do enjoy using these little cards that were solid that didn't have a saying on them uh, to back my butterflies with. That was fun. And I do enjoy how all the pieces, even though they're not all from the same collection, I do enjoy how they all came together. Um, and I do, after a while, uh, realize that I don't need a doily in every single one either. Nope, I don't. Um, if, it, if it didn't look like it needed a doily, it wasn't getting one. Um, if it didn't look like it needed the strips of paper, it's not getting one. If it didn't look like it needed um, a butterfly, it, it wasn't going to get one. I, I mean, I just, I just made the decision and, and I liked it. So here's where I take some of the, um, the striped paper, the rainbow striped paper and decorate, you know, the back of my butterfly, even though the blue is nowhere in, um, nowhere in this cluster at all. I still try to make the butterfly work. I purposely put um, put it on at an angle 
um, on the on the stripes just to give it some interest and I also didn't want the butterfly to be perfectly covered I wanted it to be like on a wonky scale so and here's where I am trying to see if I like the um, the doily or not and um, you know basically just trying to figure it out I'm also using my scraps as kind of like a washi tape I am trying to figure out how it's um you know how to keep all my pieces together without you know when I have just a tiny little bit to glue to and then I also used my alpha stickers that I created and it says in this moment so I really like that I don't know if I'll go back with a black marker because some of them are hard to see I'm not sure if I'm going to go um, to a black marker and um, kind of sort of you know pop out the words a little bit more um, outline them or do something I, I haven't made up my mind yet I have not done it so in the close-ups don't look for it <laughs> uh, here um, I accidentally dropped the um, oh what's it called the flare and so I had to pick it up sorry about that and now I am going back to my blue um, ribbon for the butterfly and I did this because the um, the bits of the flower paper that is going to be shown is a lot of that dark blue and so I wanted to pull that out just a little bit more so that way um, I could have that blue butterfly sticking out as well and so I really liked that and then it says hello the good life um, is kind of what it ended up saying once I got the flare on there um, the flare are my second set of um, dream dream oh I forgot you guys um yeah, it's another Coco Vanilla catch, um, catcher. No, <laughs> collection. Oh my god. So here I am doing the um, the ribbon uh, rainbow again behind my butterflies. And I was trying not to have to staple them because I have three butterflies this time instead of just two. And I wasn't sure if I could hide the staples. And when I started with one staple, I thought, oh, it's perfect. I can staple it right here. And then my glue dots will hold the rest of it. And look at that. You can't even tell that I stapled it. I am so proud of myself. <laughs> And of course, um, the only way I can stick down ribbon is by more glue dots. So I stick a couple glue dots on my floral piece and then I um, glue on the doily and I had to dab up all that extra glue so it didn't stick to any, any of the other clusters. Now this one I do kind of struggle with a little bit. Um, I ripped around the edges of the square just to shrink it up because it did end up being rather large. Um, but one of the things that I didn't like about this is I decided to put the striped paper behind the butterflies again, but my brain um, wanted them not to be the same. And when I'm looking at it close up, I liked it. But now that I can see it in fast forward, I do not. Um, that center one is really bothering me. I wished I would have turned it around. But up close and personal, I can't tell that. Um, I can only tell it in the camera. So isn't that weird? I think so. <laughs> so I am um, tucking the the paper pieces underneath the, uh, the flower. And I am going to end up um, actually just cutting that little leaf off because I don't want it to be seen. Um, I just wanted the flower to look like it's coming from behind the paper pieces. And, you know, just trying to, to get little different things um, out, of, out of these pieces instead of them all looking the same is basically what I'm trying to do. So here I was trying to get um, this paper to get big enough to cover the butterflies. And then I decided I'm okay if it's not. It's okay if it's not bigger than, um, you know, than my butterflies and the butterflies have holy, holy wings. It's okay. Um, it's a scrap piece of paper anyways. And so I'm just glad to be able to use it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that some of you guys are saying, why did you even bother keeping it? Uh, I don't know. But when I put the butterflies back on the side of the right now, I loved the chevron or the V shape that the uh, orange pieces made. So I definitely put that back. And here's where I decided to cut up one of my um, little flower clusters. Uh, I thought that it would be um, better served so it's not such a huge um, cluster or embellishment. Um, you know, it looks like the flowers are kind of flowing around it instead of, um, you know, one huge giant cluster of an embellishment because of the flower piece. So basically, that's 
that's it. That's all I did. Uh, I don't remember what the flare looked like. I can't remember if it was the heart or not. Did I get to the heart? I don't remember. This one happens to be my favorite. I did, um, <laughs> I did end up liking how it looked, except for the fact that I wished I would have done a black outline flower. Um, but by this point, I believe all the black outline flowers are done and I couldn't switch one out. Um, and that's okay. I didn't plan on, you know, I had no idea what I was going to use. I just threw things together, not really mm, paying attention with what, you know, how I was going to put any of these together. Um, basically, when I have a cluster of um, elements like this, I really don't have a plan. I just, I had a sketch and that's where the elements came from. And after that, it's wherever my brain goes. It is what I come up with, um, honest to goodness. So now I'm just manipulating my ribbon so they all touch a, uh, a glue dot. And then I am putting it back in the uh, flower cluster just like I did on the other one. I really do enjoy that, you guys, uh, just to just to be honest. And then here I decided, um, you know, can I really see that doily? I'm not really sure. At first I couldn't. And um, I, I was debating, do I even need it? Um, and then I decided, yes, I do. I, I do want it because of the fact that it kind of shades that green a little bit, even though that was the wrong shade of green um, throughout the rest of the embellishment cluster. Um, so I do like the that the fact that I use that doily. So, and then here I um you know am just I'm trying to think of different things. By the time that I get to my fifteenth <laughs> embellishment, uh, that sounds like a lot. Um, by the time that I get to this one, it, it's kind of like, okay, what haven't I done yet? Um, you know, I did this, I did that. Oh my god, it's starting to like just become mind mind numbing. Um, trying to come up with something different, and this one here, I decided to split up my papers and actually put the floral piece on top of my little word and it says this and then um the flare says in this moment so or is the moment is the moment that's what it is so it says this is the moment yes sorry about that <laughs> and now here uh, i am reaching the end and i am just trying to find a spot in um my leftover um little strips because as I have not been using them, I've been tossing them on the side. So I have a nice little pile of something going on over here. Uh, so that way I don't have to worry about um, like, I don't know, trash, I guess, um, is what it is. And then that way I can, um, you know, reach into it whenever I want. And I trimmed down the, the word today and then I decided, nope, I like the flare and, and what it says, and that's it. So um, this doily happened to be part of my technical difficulties. Uh, I was fighting my die cut machine again. So the saga with my die cut machine is that it quit working for a while and actually died halfway in the middle of my uh, of one of my plates going through. Actually, it was a an embossing folder going through. And to be honest, uh, we had to take it apart to get my embossing folder out. Well, after we put it back together, it started working again. And now it's kind of only half cutting things. And when it spits the thing back out, it moves the die and then sucks it back in. It's so weird, you guys. I, I struggled with it so much, especially with this uh, glitter paper. So that's why you don't see a whole lot of glittered um, doilies because I, I stopped wasting the paper. It was... It was terrible. I, uh, you know, um, four doilies lost their life in the making of this recording, just to let you know. I, I'm just, you know, a moment of silence. Thank you very much. So I took, <laughs> I decided to take all of my uh, leftover pieces that I had over on the right. I had two doilies, uh, this word today, a flower leftover, all these strips of paper, and I decided to, you know what, I'm just going to make two more clusters. I, I don't even know what they're going to look like. I apologize that that one was completely out of frame. I'm so sorry about that. But um, basically what I did was I took um, the stripe and the floral and I did stripe floral, stripe floral, blah, 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 all the way down. And I really liked how it looked. And then I took a butterfly and... Um, uh, something. It, it said something. I don't remember what it was, but... Um, it, yeah, and I just stuck it on top and I loved it. I, I absolutely loved how it looked. And so here I just did the exact same thing, the word today. And then um, I 
finished it off with some letters that said was perfect. And that was it. So here it is. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for sticking with me and, um, you know, waiting for my Take Your Tools Out, uh, Take Out Your Tools Tuesday. Um, I apologize that it is not Tuesday, but <laughs> hey, um, who says that you guys all watch these on Tuesdays anyways, right? <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I definitely look forward, um, you know, to what uh, Woodgrain Wednesday because I am stoked at all the different clusters that I have planned for that day as well. But it might be late as well because of my technical difficulties. Um, to be honest, my computer is not running up to par. And so it is taking hours, you guys. And I mean hours, like eight hours to um, edit one video. Yes. Um, the exporting, the importing, the it's awful. And I do know that it is related to the processor in my computer. And so that is why I am not shelling out videos as fast as I used to be. So as soon as I get that problem fixed, then hopefully I will get back on the video bandwagon. All right. I will check you all tomorrow. Bye.